Helping companies or organisations work well requires knowledge of the personal preferences of the people in them. These preferences are called attitudes in psychology and they are revealed in what people say and do. What people actually do, however, is not always what they say is important to do because it's sometimes too bothersome to act according to what they say is important. The strength of a person's attitude shows in how much difficulty they overcome to reach the goal implied by that attitude. For example, Sarah pursues her attitudinal goal of protecting the environment in many ways, some of which are strenuous and inconvenient. These actions can be referred to as behavioural means, by which Sarah realises her environmental protection goal. Any one of these behaviours involves costs, such as effort and troubles. The total set of costs typical under some living conditions allows the behaviours to be ranked from low to high. When Sarah does several things to protect the environment, some quite costly, like commuting by bicycle, she appears dedicated to the environmental protection goal. In other words, her attitude to protect the environment manifests itself in what she actually says and does. In contrast to Sarah, consider Paul. Paul engages in fewer protective behaviours than Sarah. Not only that, but they cost Paul relatively little in terms of time, effort and so forth. Paul is apparently less dedicated to protecting the environment. Noticeably, people differ in how much they do, and this mirrors people's different degrees of environmental attitude. A few have extremely strong, a few extremely weak attitudes, and most fall somewhere in between. These basic ideas were first articulated by Donald Campbell, an American social psychologist, back in 1963. One critical cost factor is distance. When the commuting distance is short, bike commutes are likely. That is, the probability of biking becomes greater than 50%. Thus, even a person who cares very little about the environment might go by bike. Using the bike is equally likely when the commute is long and inconvenient, if the person's environmental attitude is strong. To encourage commuting by bicycle, one can reduce behavioural costs. For example, by creating conditions in which people do not need to make long commutes. To encourage bicycle commuting by people who live far from their work, one can also strengthen the environmental attitude of those people with weak attitudes. According to the Campbell paradigm, people's attitudes show in behaviour and in the extent to which they overcome behavioural costs. In its simplicity, the paradigm questions the widespread belief that human behaviour is complex and hard to manage. It also raises doubts about some venerable theories in psychology, such as self-perception, cognitive dissonance, and planned behaviour. 